All right, so everyone's just kind of getting into the room now. So we'll go ahead and get started. So thank you all for joining us today for our webinar, Improving English Listening and Conversation Skills Through the Use of Financial and Health Literacy Content. This webinar is hosted by Florida Literacy Coalition and made possible through the support of the Florida Department of Education. So we'd like to encourage you all to use the chat. Um, I know a lot of you are already familiar with Zoom. If you're having technical issues, please let me know through the chat. You can do a direct message to me and I can answer your question privately. Um, other than that, we'd like to encourage you to use the chat to share resources you, you have or um, share questions or tips. Uh, and we'd also like to encourage you all to maybe unmute yourself when you uh, have a question. Uh, we, Zoom allows you to talk to the presenters and talk to each other. So we would definitely encourage you to do that as well. So I want to quickly um, bring your attention to an opportunity we have for attending this webinar. So uh, we have a flash sale right now for our Florida Literacy Conference, which is all online. So for the next 48 hours, you can get 20% off of the conference registration. So the information is up on the screen right now, but I will share it in the chat uh, once we get started in the session. So I also wanted to um, remind the financial literacy grantees to please stay on after the webinar for, um, for a meeting. So with that, I'll go ahead and pass it over to our presenters. We have Christina Urena, who is a pre-college ESOL and academic studies department head at the, uh, and Florida CASA certified national and state trainer with Atlantic Technical College, and Christine mm -hmm. Briggs, who is an ESOL resource teacher with Collier County Public Schools. All right, so I'll go ahead and pass it over to you guys now. Thank you, Nicole. Well, I see a couple of familiar names out there in our participant list. We have, it looks like 32 participants so far. I appreciate if everybody stays muted until we ask for you to unmute because otherwise we, or else we hear lots of other background noise. Um, but once again, just like what Nicole said, thank you very much. At any time, if you ever have a question, you could use your Zoom reactions toolbar and you could raise your hand virtually and we will hopefully see you. If not, you could of course unmute yourself and give us a little shout out. Um, Christina and I will be kind of monitoring the chat box the best we can. We already see uh, some people are introducing themselves and I know you guys like to use those acronyms, but help me out here, Arlene, where is OCI? Arlene's allowed to unmute herself. If, oh, from Orlando, is that it? That might be Orlando County. All right, we'll go with that. Otherwise, you could just add that in the chat box. Um, we are going to start our presentation. We have a jam-packed hour and 15 minutes for you. And you will leave here after our time together uh, with plenty of resources that will help your students be able to communicate more fluently and feel confident in completing their daily tasks in life. Christina, help me out here. Can you make sure that you see our presentation? Yes, we are good. Perfect. Okay, so once again, we have this nice title. We will be improving English listening and conversational skills through health and financial literacy. Once again, once again, welcome everybody. Okay, this is always a fun way to either start your class in person or virtually. And that's what we're going to do now with all of you all. We, I like to call it, or we, sorry, we like to call it a warm up. You always want to start engaging everybody in your class. And you could do this once again in person or if you are a virtual instructor. So let's right now, everybody head to your chat box, find your chat button, click it and answer the following questions. You could either choose one of the questions or both of the questions to answer. The first one is, what would you say if someone asked why you cared enough to teach or work with adult learners? And the other one is definitely more fun 
Uh, if your life was a book, what would it be titled? And how would the book end? Take just a few minutes, maybe two minutes. Start putting things in the chat box. And Christina, um, maybe you could help help me out here. I'm still trying to monitor my both screens here. If anything um, is popping through, let us know. For an example, I always like to share if your life was a book, mine would be titled Absolutely Crazy. And how would the book end? Mine would not end. I think I would keep having sequels. <laughs> Bania said uh, it is rewarding. I'm sure rewarding. it's why you teach adult learners. Uh, Yvonne said, I believe everyone should be able to read. Denise says, because everyone's success matters. Mm. And the title, Begin Again. Ooh. Okay. Uh, Dina said, as the world turns, it will end happily ever after. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> I like that. Uh, I'm only going to read a few because they I think really fast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Nancy says, I prefer working with adults rather than children since they are motivated to learn and I don't have to discipline and I don't have discipline problems. I guess we'll agree with that too. Uh, Erica says, I care enough to teach and work with adult learners because literacy at any age can make a radically positive change. And sorry, I should have my glasses on too. The life of a person, their family, their community, and their world. Uh, Jennifer says, I like seeing results. Mm. And I get this one, it's uh, for the book, Why Don't I? <laughs> Title, sure, as soon as I can get a nap. <laughs> <laughs> and how would it end? <laughs> Uh, how would it end? It will be an ongoing di diary. That's no <laughs> just like yours, Christine. Just like mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's fun. And please feel free to use these warm ups in your adult uh, classes. Of course, just tweak it a little bit to meet the needs of your students. All right. Great job. And I do believe this is being recorded. So if you ever want to go back and reread everybody's, you'll have that opportunity. I'm just going to take a quick moment here to introduce myself so you know who I am. And that's another helpful uh, trick. If you are an adult uh, instructor, you want to build that community within your class right away or else you're gonna lose your students. And our goal is of course to retain our students. Now granted, we're only together for about an hour, but I would still like for you to get to know me a little bit and Christina, and hopefully we'll have a little bit more of a chance to get to know everybody else online. Uh, I am Christine and that is Christina. However, you could call us both and we'll both answer. Uh, I also have many other names such as mom and lovey. I have three wonderful boys and of course my husband. And I have been a teacher basically my whole life yeah. ever since I graduated college. Uh, but I've been lucky enough to work with the adult ed program for about, uh, I wanna say about nine years now. Uh, Christine and I are both one of your state trainers uh, as well. And in my daily life, my current position, I am the resource teacher where I uh, basically help out all of our teachers and I make sure our students are happy. That's what I tell them. Um, Christina, you want to take it away and introduce yourself? Thank you, Chris. If you can, uh, you already moved to the next slide. Thank you. <laughs> my name is Christina Ureña, but in this country, I learned to be Christina Urena. <laughs> Okay, I come uh, from the Dominican Republic originally. I was an ESOL student when I first came to this country, and then I was an AB student, and I earned a GD in Spanish. Okay. I have a beautiful family. I wanted to show the pictures. Uh, my daughter kind of threatened me for putting the ugly Christmas <laughs> sweater picture, but that's the one that I liked that was the most recent. 
So I have three girls and uh, my husband is the boy in the house, okay? <laughs> We're opposite. <laughs> you, uh, yeah, exactly. You got the boys, I got the girls. Uh, I have been working in adult education for 28 years now because my first job in New York was as a paraprofessional and it was for an alternative school. So just like the school that I work now, we have different sites throughout New York City. And my first job as a teacher was a, a, home, a shelter for homeless families. And I taught ESOL and ABE at that place. Uh, now I am working as a pre-college department head at Atlantic Technical College in Broward County. And just like Christine, you know, it's a different name here, but it's the same job kind of a thing. We work with the teachers and, you know, helping them with curriculum and things and making sure the students are happy and learning. I'm also a state trainer for different trainings um, for the adult education department. And I also do CASAS trainings. And I received my bachelor's from Lehman College in the Bronx in New York. And I love sewing for children. Not for adults. If you're five and older, you do not qualify for my sewing. So don't text me. <laughs> Only for children. Great. Thanks, Christina. I don't even know how to sew. <laughs> All right. If you look up here on our next slide, get your chat box ready. Christina, help me out. See who is the first one who writes in the response. What does WIIFM stand for? Think about it. What do you think WIIFM stands for? Did somebody get it? Oh, Christina, unmute yourself. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> First person was Veronica Pavon Baker. Oh, Veronica, <laughs> no, she is cheated. In for me. <laughs> <laughs> Veronica, we know you know it. <laughs> I've seen that before. I should have not answered, sorry. <laughs> Uh, okay. The next person after Veronica, because Veronica is also a trainer like us, is Erika Reynoso. Aha, uh -huh. so good job. Okay, thank you, Veronica, but really good job, Erika. Thank you. Yes, what's in it for me? Adult learners want to know what's in it for me. If it's nothing important, I'm out of here. So we hope that our presentation is something that is for you. So at the end of this session, you'll be able to incorporate listening and conversational skills right away into your lessons, especially with the topic of health and financial literacy. And you'll also um, be able to understand how to take a contextualized approach in teaching health and financial literacy. Contextualize, that's that new buzzword going on here that hopefully we'll touch on for you to understand a bit more. Christine, we do have a few people who put all the description. One put Y5 on the radio, and the other one says, how I feel about algebra. Oh, <laughs> oh that's funny. Very funny. OK, thank you for all your responses. All right, we're going to kick it off here with base the basics. What even makes a good conversation? And you actually have to teach your students this. Um, to make a good conversation, you need to have fluency. You have to have the right subject matter for them to be able to converse with. And you also have to kind of teach them the style, like the body language when they're having a conversation. Um, and especially in the English language, I know I'm probably preaching to a choir here, but you know when we speak, you should change your voice, the different intonation. And that's a skill that you actually have to teach second language learners. You will be, um, you will have access to all these slides with the clickable links. So um, don't worry about taking pictures and stuff like that. And you could get more information by clicking the link after our presentation. Um, the, the one thing about when you teach them what makes a good conversation, you have to stress to the point that each participant has to participate equally. 
did you ever get stuck in a conversation sometimes with my husband don't tell him but he'll just talk 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 and that's not really a conversation so you don't want one person to overpower the conversation don't tell him i told you that so, um right now we're going to actually practice just an informal conversation and you're definitely going to want to incorporate that into your class um, it's not always formal okay. conversations and this one uh, we of course pick the topic the subject matter of what's important and what's going on um and today to make it meaningful and relevant is of course the coronavirus pandemic now, granted, we're a bit of a larger group and we don't necessarily want to take time out with breakout rooms, but in your class, you could, of course, break it into small groups or if you're a virtual instructor, use those breakout rooms. Today, we're just going to uh, voluntold somebody. We're just going to pick on to unmute your microphone and just think of a time that happened to you about the corona pandemic. If you have a have a story to tell, um, if you knew a family member, something that happened to you, whether good, whether not so good. If you'd like to volunteer, go ahead and just unmute yourself and, and share really quickly. If not, we'll pick on somebody. Okay, I'm going to pick on somebody. I see Katie. Katie, are you out there? Are you listening, Katie? All right, let's try somebody else. Erica, Erica Reynosa. Hi, everyone. My name is Erica Reynoso. I'm from Orlando. And my story is um, my sister is an ER nurse. And so she was taking care of a lot of, stu of, a lot of students, a lot of patients <laughs> um, that had, um, that were, that had Corona and, um, Unfortunately, she was exposed um, as well and contracted Corona, and so she wasn't able to spend uh, her celebrate her her child's tenth birthday with oh, him. But um, but she's better, and 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 I'm thankful for that. Well, thank you for sharing that story, Erica. And can you see how you can use this if you're a teacher? Can you see how you can use this as a conversation um, tactic in your class? I see you thumbs up and shaking your head. Great job. And I hope everybody else sees that as well. We have time for one more if somebody else would like to share a little story. Yes, I see Joseph. Joseph Chini? <laughs> yes, thank you. <clears throat> um, well, I'm with uh, Learn to Read and I also work with St. Gerard campus. And uh, we've had some students that have had to deal with uh, COVID. Mm -hmm. So from a student perspective, we've done virtual uh, classrooms and also done some, um, you know, meld them some work for them to finish. So you just wow. accommodate people as much as you possibly can. That's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Sure. I know there's, I'm sure, a million and one stories that we could share. And I think our point today was pick a relevant topic and it's a conversation will easily happen in your class. Okay, we're going to focus on the topic of health literacy for the next um, few, well, next couple of minutes. Uh, health literacy is defined as it enhances your general literacy skills and language acquisition and improves students' ability to evaluate health information, communicate with their healthcare providers, and make informed health decisions overall. All right, we ready? Are right, we taking a deep breath? Here we go. The first resource that I would like to share, um, it's a new project and you will definitely be hearing a lot more about the Teaching Skills That Matter project. It was offered and developed by OCTE, which is the Office of Career and Technical and Adult Education. And I had the opportunity all year to be a part of this project. And I have learned so much and my, now my role is to share with other teachers in the state of Florida all about the different uh, lessons in we have a toolkit and I have a million to share with you but today I'm just going to give you a little taste of one of them and it uh, they 
they focus on nine essential skills, one of them being communication. And so I just want to share one of these lessons. And if you like these lessons, once again, you could go back and refer to it in the slides when you get that. Uh, Christine, this, yes? sorry, but Katie says she was there. Her mic is not working. Oh, OK. Thanks, Katie. <laughs> Um, okay, so this here is one of the lessons out of the Teaching Skills That Matter toolbox, and it is called Barriers to Successful Patient-Doctor Communication, and this is a problem-based learning lesson. Um, remember, uh, oh, Christina, I'm just going to ask you one quick thing. If you see things in the chat box, I'm not following the chat box right now, but, so if anybody says anything, just let me know, okay? I will. All right, cool. Um, so in, in, in all these lessons, they will always give you a background, the NRS level on, on how appropriate the lesson is. It will give the teacher the objectives, how many, how long it will take to teach. It will give you the, the teacher objectives and the student objectives. And basically in this one, this is learning, this is where the student reads the Diaz family story and they're working together, they're communicating, they're conversing, they're listening to each other, and they're developing possible solutions to help this Diaz family face their challenges here in the healthcare system. Um, this also goes into, it's also a contextualized uh, lesson where it also incorporates math. Um, they have to listen to the key details, engage in collaborative discussions, um, communicate, it reaches lots of different central skills, but today we're focusing on the communication skills. Uh, here is just an example of the Diaz family story. As you see, it's not very extensive. Um, so they, they practice their reading skills. They have discussion questions where they'll be working in small groups, communicating back and forth with each other, and then coming up with the solutions. Uh, once again, they also give you extra resources for you to go to. When you get the slide, if you click on the link where it says health literacy lesson, you will be able to have access to this lesson for you to use in your class. Whoops. Whoops. The next resource that I would like to share with you, um, I'm hoping everybody online is very familiar with these, um, well, I'm not too sure if you would be unless you have applied for the health literacy grant, which I highly recommend. Christina and I have been health, the health grant, um, what do you want to say, grantees, winners of the $5,000 uh, health literacy grant that we received. Uh, and all you have to do is apply. Uh, and we use the two resources that the Florida Literacy Coalition puts out for us, there's a beginning level book and there's the blue book is for the intermediate advanced group. And what we did, well, we, hold on a second, Christina, before I move on to, to these resources, would you like to share a little bit about when you received the health literacy grant, what you used it for and how to build the conversation and communication skills? Well, if you, you're talking about for our students projects yes. that we have done. Okay, yes. we have done a few projects. Actually, today we had uh, two, two, about 20 students were uh, doing CPR mm -hmm. classes, a uh, basic life support, that's what it's called. So they mm -hmm. get getting their CPR certification. We are also doing a fire prevention workshop next week with the money. Uh, we also doing uh, mindfulness and they, the students, we're going to mail this out. We have it ready. We just have to mail it. But we put this kit together with like aroma therapy. And the students are going to get it at home and we're going to tell them how to make it. So they're all getting a bottle of the aroma and a little container to make a, like a roll on stick. Uh, we have also done presentations on a monthly basis. We did one on uh, high blood pressure and we gave out about 10 blood pressure monitors uh, that we purchased with the funds. And 
um, we ask how many students have high blood pressure or had a relative in their home that suffered from high blood pressure. And anybody who said yes, then we ask them if they own a monitor and if they say no, they came to the school and pick one up. Uh, so that was good. And we also did a um, presentation on the vaccine and we had uh, two doctors on the panel, you know, answering questions. Uh, we did one about drinking. So uh, twice a month, we have presentations for them and they participate on the presentation. And as well, like if it's something, some giveaways, they'll be part of the giveaways. Great. And I know we both did um, health fairs and that's yes. really important for the students because they are living and breathing um, communicating with people because they have their little boards that they created whether it was virtually on a laptop or an actual board and they're explaining what they've learned to others and with the Florida literacy with the grants it gives you a huge opportunity because you get this nice chunk of money to spend it on your students for health awareness um, and which leads to uh, why we put this on here because believe it or not it is free you just go to the florida literacy coalition link and you have access to this book and tons of resources and i'm just going to show you the ones that we use and have used and uh, the students definitely enjoy the activities one of them such as the role plays of course that is the number one conversational skill that all of our adult ed students want. They want to be able to speak um, and practice the role plays so that when they get somewhere, they feel comfortable conversing with either their doctor or the nurse or the, uh, the pharmacist or uh, a cashier at Publix. Eric, I see your hand raised real quick. I was in Germany and I had uh, an, a vision problem. I had an eye infection. And mm -hmm. I always love when I get to be in a role in the, in the shoes of my students where I'm at a linguistic uh, deficit mm -hmm. because it reminds me. And I says, and I luckily the doctor spoke English, but mm -hmm. if he hadn't, it would have been so, di so difficult and emotionally and mentally like troubling to try to communicate my feelings. So I love sometimes for us, even as teachers, I think we, we take for granted like the usefulness of this mm -hmm. information. And mm -hmm. I always say, can I do this in German? I can, okay, slow down. It helps me like say, how much time would I need with this vocabulary, with the practice? I love this, thank you. Well, I'm glad you share that, Erica, because a lot of teachers, when I go in at, with my role and I see this happening in the classrooms, I get excited that they're doing role plays, but they do it like once and done. I'm like, well, wait a second. They have to repeat and re repeat and repeat and repeat, switch partners and do it without looking. And you have to do it over and over and over again. And so um, thank you, Erica, for that, because I was going to mention uh, if you are a teacher, don't just do a one and done. Just don't say, okay, Joseph and Erica, you're the pharmacist, you're the patient, and there's your activity, it's done in five minutes. This could take like literally an hour with just switching it and then getting up in front of the class and presenting, you know, having them write out on index cards. There's so much that you could do with role plays. One thing that Collier County um, is we uploaded, we use Canvas, which is their, our learning management system for our in-person and virtual learners. So we put, put together a Canvas course for staying healthy and we uploaded these role plays and for the students, they have to submit their assignment as a media recording. So first we have it also recorded where the teachers modeled and they uh, did the dialogue so the student has to listen to the dialogue and then they have to go home and they practice it either with a partner or a family member at home and then they have to submit it as a media recording so then they have to hear themselves recording the dialogue as well um, and here's just an example I got ahead of myself here um, in canvas they listen to the teacher they practice the conversation three times or more, then they uh, click on the record button, they record it, um, and then practice the second dialogue with a partner. 
And these dialogues, I'm, I don't want to say the lazy teacher, I say the resourceful teacher. You do not have to create these dialogues. There are so many out there, either Florida Literacy Coalition with the Staying Healthy, or you just Google role plays for blah, 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 and a million gazillion come up. Um, here's an example with our, the intermediate, when we use the blue book, the staying healthy, same thing. Um, I was just giving an example of how we incorporate the role plays in our ESOL classrooms. Um, we also had teacher created role plays uh, when we did receive this, the the grant, we had some teachers that were doing it in their classrooms and some of the teachers were just gung ho and they created role plays on their own. And I just wanted to share them with you. Come in, you can do a practice test. And then oh, when I hear somebody, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so there's one about setting a doctor appointment over the phone. And then there's also a role play that our teacher created going to the doctor's office. Once again, you'll have access to these role plays after our presentation. And there's also one for when they are at the pharmacy. Moving on to another resource that we use and um, I feel is a very important seeing that I have three children in the schools. This resource is called From Home to School by New Readers Press, and it's to help the adult learners be able to feel confident and speak fluently. Um, that will strengthen the communication between parents, their teachers, the school, and the students. Um, and once again, there are some health and financial literacy topics. This one was, I'm just giving you an example from it. It was don't throw away your food. And in this resource, they give you listening prompts. Uh, this was just, what does your child eat for lunch at school? What food does the school cafeteria serve? And it's just conversation skills. Um, and once again, this is just building the communication from the school to the parents. So if you have a lot of parents in your classroom, this would be a great resource for you. Um, they also give you dialogues and topics for discussion. Um, oh, I forgot to go back. Um, when we were talking about what makes a good conversation, you also have to teach them, I think this goes hand in hand, how to be a good listener. Um, so make sure you add that in. Oh, this is just the example of the lunch dialogue. Um, one, one would say, what's for lunch at school today? The menu says spaghetti on Thursday. Go ahead, take a minute. You could read that dialogue um, to yourself. Once again, as you are teaching dialogues, you have to teach them the intonation, the fluency of it, as well as body language. Don't make them just stand like robots. Let them use their hands a little bit. Oh, and there's also YouTube videos on how to teach intonation and body language for conversations. Uh, I think I saw somebody quick hand raise. Erica again, thank you. I must have you in my front frame here. Um, I attended a, um, a presentation by Dr. Marcella Farina from UCF uh, a few years ago and it was on pronunci pronunciation. And mm. I appreciated it so much and I applied it immediately in my class. And it's something that students always thank me for. And I do sort of a customized um, IPA for words. And mm -hmm. they always say, thank you teacher for showing us how to pronounce the word. And, you know, uh, capital letters for, st mm -hmm. for stress syllables. And mm -hmm. maybe I, I might tweak it to like what the language learners person is, but then mm -hmm. I try to do it in, in an English sort of way. But students really appreciate that and always comment on that. That's cool. Thanks for sharing, Erica. I think we're on the same page here. <laughs> um, 
I just wanted to, of course, give reference. I did not make this stuff up on my own. <laughs> I am the resource teacher. I find good resources and I share them out. Uh, once again, that's the teaching skills that matter. Um, that's a new project by Octe. Oh, that was just another lesson. The cost of smoking. That's another really good health literacy lesson. Um, the Florida Literacy Coalition. Thank you. We love the Florida Literacy Coalition and this other resource from Home to School by New Readers Press. <laughs> Thanks for the love, Erica. <laughs> okay, I hope that you are not totally sick of my voice. However, we are. I'm going to mute myself and hand it over, pass the baton to Christina. Let's talk about some financial literacy. Thank you. So I'm going to try to share my screen so then I can move through the slides. So give me one second. I have it. Okay, it's hopefully I'll go to the right page. Nope. Okay, so here you can all see my screen, my presentation. I mean, the same presentation, but good. I'm not that familiar with this uh, Google slide. How do I play the presentation, Christine? Do you, if you go up to the top right, it'll say present. Oh, okay. I have I couldn't see it because I have my chat there. Okay. Looks good now. Yeah. Can you see my presentation now? It's good. Yes. Yep, we can okay. see it. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> New platform today. Okay, so uh, you can see the definition of financial literacy, but I want you oops, to take a look at a, an important word there that I was not uh, paying attention before, and it's the word lifetime. Okay, we're not helping the student just at the moment when they are in your class but we're trying to teach them something that they can continue to apply through their life. Here is a list of possible topics. There are more topics than that, but these were the topics that we were covering when we did the uh, handsome banking, which I'm gonna talk to you about later. But anything that you do with financial literacy, just like health, we have a lifetime impact on your students. So the first topic that I have here, you're going to say, really, Christina, coins, but yes, okay? When I came to this country in 1986, the Dominican Republic had the same coin system. So for me, I knew about coins. But two months ago, I had my goddaughter visit the United States for the first time. And of course, you know, you take them shopping. We went to Disney. And I noticed that every place we went, it could be... $12.50, she never used the coins. She was just paying with dollars and then she had all these coins and she came to me and said, can, can you please help me get money from this? And this girl is going to be a doctor at the end of this year. So I was like, what do you mean that's money? And she looked at me like blank and I'm like, you don't know how to use coins? And she said, no. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So it hit me that in many countries, the coin system is totally different than in the United States. So it's important that we teach them uh, how the coins work here. So for that, I had put here, you know, an activity is, uh, you know, teach the value and name of each coin because it's not just the value, but, you know, a penny, dime, nickel. Uh, because then they can really look at the value on the coin, but somebody can say, do you have a dime? And you wondering, what did they ask me? Um, I remember when I first came to this country, it was actually my coworker asked me, do you have a single? And I kept thinking, she already knows I am married. I do not understand why she's asking me something about a single. So think about it that way. They need to know the names, okay? Uh, there are a lot of free make a hood quizzes. And um, I wanted to share one here. Uh, let's see if that works. So I guess I'll stop sharing the screen and go to my other screen because there's a few things that I want to show you there. Uh, hold on, like I said, I got to make it with this technology. Can you see my screen with Kahoot? Thank you. Yep. Okay, so this is a, a Kahoot about coins. I just went into Kahoot and put coins, 
But I want to show you, look at the different questions. So you could use this question to, to do an activity with them in the class. Okay, because it goes from what coin is this to how much is it worth? What is the value? What is it called? How many these make? A dollar? You know, there are many different questions here. So you can come and use the question and use, uh, you know, real money in your class. Or if you're doing remote, you can still do it and ask the student to for relative to give them some coins. When I started uh, working on this presentation, the title for this was, uh, I, well, actually I gave it a beginner level. And then I changed my mind because you can have a person at another level who is new to the country. So that's why I changed the, the title to just new to the country. Okay, and then you can create a, wor a worksheet to talk about prices in cents. So I went ahead and created this and I just Googled the local supermarket and I got fennel because honestly, I have never seen fennel before. <laughs> I started working for this. So this is this to give a good conversation. And I just chose um, uh, vegetables that were the, that the price was in dollars and cents. And here's how you can do a role play activity for uh, paying for these items. So here are the rules, you know, you can only pay for one item at a time because you don't, you want them to say $2 and 29 cents. And then how can you pay for that? So you can have student A and B role play buying these items. Okay, and they can use any coin combination. Like I said, you could do this also with fake money in the classroom if you have the lower levels or you can use real money. Now talking about pennies, and change, you can also teach them ways to save using coins or change because we want them to save money. That's what financial literacy is. And it's talk about it's talk here about the money jar or the piggy bank. You know, these are classic ways to save money in this country. And then the activity will be to think of ways that you can use the money. And we'll do that here. So in the chat box, I want you to go ahead and think of ways you can use the money that you saved in your penny bag, bank or your money jar. And by the way, this money jar here is very smart because it counts the money as you put it in. So you'll know how much you have. So example that is that you can give is I will deposit the money into my savings account. And then you can have somebody who's gonna say, when I cash my coins, I'll just like to buy a new wallet <laughs> right? on your purse, it depends. So I put some rules, always tell the students the rules, uh, you know, while taking turns. So like Christine said, so it's not one student just taking over the conversation. Okay, so go to your chat box and please let me know how would you spend that money? And Christine, you'll have to look at the chat box for me because I can't. I'm on it. Dinner out. Oh, yes. For tips for food delivery. That's a good one. Hopefully we're able to get out to dinner more often now. Uh, take the family out to Dairy Queen. Nice. Ice cream. Oh, Jennifer is very realistic. Gas to go to work. <laughs> Erica, travel, Lori, Neil, shoes. I'm right there with you. This mama needs a new pair of shoes. I would use my coins for purchasing dollar items at the dollar store. <laughs> oh, that's another one, Dollar Tree shopping spree. Oh, dollar okay. Tree shopping spree, I like that one. Okay, we have another, uh, is it a realist? Pamela, you would save it all. Oh, a new haircut. Okay. That's a good and you one. know, even here we have been funny. Imagine your students talking about this topic. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to include a picture, but I couldn't find the quick enough of, you know, some people take those bottles from the water coolers. Mm -hmm. In there, you can probably save to a trip on an airplane. <laughs> I know, right? Hey, wait a second. You start putting question. quarters. Christina, wait, this one came through from Norman. I don't get it. Since last year, I no longer have any coins. What did you do? Do you just use credit cards? Where's Norman? 
That is true. A lot of people are not using change anymore because of the pandemic. Uh, yep. Uh, oh, is that why? Right. There's Norman. Yep. Oh. True. Okay. Okay. I like that. Thank you guys for, for participating. So the next one I have is more for uh, the advanced level, and this is a listening activity. And it's that the student will listen to a TED talk about saving money, and uh, they will take notes and then share what they learned. Uh, this of taking notes is also um, one of the competencies for the CCR level. So if you have CCR students, you know, this is a good activity to do with them. And I'm going to click on the TED talk and cross my fingers so I can show you just a little piece of it, not the entire TED talk. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, good. Hold on, I love going to the end instead of playing from the beginning. Christina, we don't hear the TED talk. Okay. I believe what we could just end it. Um, if unless you want to take some time, I know when you share your screen, you have to click a little button that says share computer audio. Okay, let me then stop and reshare because I do want you to hear a little bit of this. Hold on. Perfect. It's a very, okay. very little box. Where is check. it? See, I do um, here we do. Oh, I see it now. We have um, Teams, we don't use Zoom, so I am new to this one, but here we go. You're a quick learner. Thank you. Let me give you an example. You here now? We ran a study yeah. which in Thank one group, you. we showed people their income on a monthly basis. In another group, we showed people their income on a weekly basis. And what we found was that people who saw their income on a weekly basis were able to budget better throughout the month. Now it's important to know that we didn't change how much money people were receiving. We just changed the environment in which they understood their income. And environmental cues like this have an impact. So I'm not gonna share tricks with you that you already know. I'm not gonna tell you how to open up a savings account or how to start saving for your retirement. What I am gonna share with you is how to bridge this gap from your intentions to save and your actions. Are you ready? Here's number one. Harness the power of pre-commitment. Fundamentally, we think about ourselves in two different ways, our present self and our future self. In the future, we're perfect. In the future, we're gonna save for retirement, we're going to lose weight, we're gonna call our parents more. But we oftentimes forget that our future self is exactly the same person as our present self. We know that one of the best times to save is when you get your tax return. So we tried an A-B test. In the first group, we texted people in early February, hopefully before they even filed for their taxes, and we asked them, if you get a tax refund, what percentage would you like to save? Now this is a really hard question. They didn't know if they would receive a tax refund or how much, but we asked a question anyway. In the second group, we asked people right after they received their refund, what percentage would you like to save? Now here's what happened. In that second condition, when people just received their tax refund, they wanted to save about 17% of their tax refund. But in the condition when we asked people before they even filed their taxes, savings rates increased from 17% to 27% when we asked in February. Why? Because you're committing for your future self. And okay, I'm gonna stop right there. I hope you enjoy. It's, uh, it's, the video is only about four minutes if you wanna do with your students. Don't know if you enjoy it, but I think uh, she looks like one of our students. So I like her presentation. I think she goes at a really good pace. Uh, she put a lot of words on it, you know, unlike uh, some other tech talks that I think might be a little bit difficult for our students. So the link will be in the presentation when you get it. Okay, we can also put it in the chat box. I don't know, Christine, if you can put it there so that they people can have it after the um, presentation. Okay, so here I go again, just do the regular uh, presentation if I can get back to it. <laughs> okay, so here I go, sorry about that. 
It says it closed my window. So I had to go back and find it. Christine, did you just share any screen and then it goes back there? I just don't know what happened to it. Let me look on the top here. Okay, I have it. Sorry about that. Like I said, technology, technology, technology. It keeps saying it wants to take me back to the tech talk. Okay, here it is. Sorry. Okay, here we are. So that's the tech talk. And after that, this is not that much of an activity for listening and conversation, but I put this in there so you can take a look because it's a, a um, kind of a, an activity that we did with our students when we had financial planners, creating a budget. So the activity is there. It would be good to do it after the tech talk for those advanced students. And as you do that, look at the picture here, money is tight. Okay, remember that money is tight. The next part, I'm gonna show is the hands-on banking curriculum. This is for all levels. And Chris, uh, Christine, not this year, but I believe last year, and I got it this year, also got the uh, financial literacy grant uh, through the Florida Health, um, to the Florida Literacy Coalition and uh, Wells Fargo. And this one also, we've been using the money and it's a wonderful uh, grant. You have not applied, please apply for it. And when you go to the hands-on curriculum, they have many topics. When you look at the tabs here, they have youth, adults as well. So you can look just for those and then resources for educators. And I have it open here. Can you see my other screen now? I think I'm doing better now, okay? So this is what it is. You will click on adults. And for them now, that is a short assessment, and I believe they can actually do it on their phone. And that will take them to the topics where they need uh, the most help. And here are the topics covered. If you click on resources, they have a PDF with a lot of information that you can print and use and use in your class. Here is one activity that I took from there that you can do with your student. And this one is about check. And one of my coworkers said to me, who uses checks anymore? And I said, well, you know what? I'm planning on buying a carton in the next few months and I don't think I'm gonna be paying them cash. I'm probably gonna bring a check. And she said, you're right. So talk to your students about checks and you can just uh, have them like in groups and Talk about checks, you know, what is the check? How do you get checks? You can also say, you know, do you use checks in your countries and things like that. And also the checks, you know, you don't have to get boring checks. You can also get fun checks if you're a fun person like me. Now, these are not my checks, but I do have some fun checks. Okay, here's another activity, which is saving for retirement. And this one is also for all levels. We actually did this and we had a financial literacy day at our schools and every classroom chose a topic from actually we chose the topic from the hands-on banking curriculum and this one was uh, saving for retirement it's an activity that they can do where they can compare contrast their retirement you know in their country uh, with the united states uh, that's the class discussion they can do a you can see here a board that the student did and they, they presented that information to the class and the other student asked them questions. Now that we are not face to face, they can still do this activity, you know, uh, on a PowerPoint presentation. And here's a jigsaw activity. This is from the uh, hands-on banking site. And I, I don't want to click on it now because it's going to take a while, but these are videos and also presentations that they can, you know what, I'm going to click on it. In this, what you can do, there's a little video, and then you can break this part into different areas and assign it for students, and then they all come together, you know, jigsaw activity. Um, you know, the, one group can talk about what is a CPA or tax advisor. 
what do they know? Another group can talk about having a retirement strategy and what is it that you can do. They can just use the information here or you can send them to do research. But there is a mini video that I'm not gonna play in there as well. Here's another activity that is called to buy or not to buy. And it's also from the handsome banking. And what I wanna show you here is that the handsome banking resource for instructors come with instructions on how to do the activities. So you don't have to make anything. You just have to find the resource like Christine says, <laughs> be resourceful. Okay, so you can print their guide for teachers or if you're a teacher, you know, print it for yourself. But this is just an activity and it's a story. Okay, here's another activity that we did during the financial literacy fair. And this one is about identity theft for all levels. And this one, the students who did this board actually did a role play uh, of somebody getting their identity stolen over the phone. And then they talk about why you should give over the phone and why you should not give over the phone so you don't get your identity uh, stolen. I was a victim of identity theft and I know how horrible that could be. And I share a resource here called Randall ESL Cyber Listening Lab. You may be familiar with this because this uh, play has been around for a long time, okay? And in there, they do have some activities on uh, financial literacy. So I found one on student loan and one on identity theft that is at the intermediate level. And if you are not familiar with this, I am going to really show it, uh, really quickly show it to you. And it's like a bank of activities for listening. And here you can see the listening screen uh, script. If you want to look it up before, it gives you some pre-listening exercises. And then you'll just click here. Hey, Brandon, what are you doing? Oh, you'll like this. It's a new website that helps you improve your writing skills for free. Really? Yeah. And That'd I, be really helpful. Yeah, and I'm signing up right now. Wow, let me see that. Yeah, it's easy. You just enter your name, your birthday, your address, your bank information, what? your credit card wait, number. Wait, 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 wait. I thought you said it was free. It is. Okay, so I'm not going to let it run all, but after they finish the listening activity, then they have some questions, but you can just copy those questions and have the student ask in class the questions. Just You just play it, and then they have to answer the question or have a conversation about the questions. But these are mainly listening activities. Anyone here, I want to see in the chat box, familiar with this um, website, Randall's? Because I have known about them, I think, since I moved to Florida 15 years ago, maybe more than that. Christine, can you look at the chat? Yes, Banya has. I definitely have, and our teachers use it as well. Erica has, yes. Um, our Collier group, yes. Thank you, Lori. Good. Oh, Kayla, never heard of it before. So Kayla, you have homework assignments. Go yes. give it a try. <laughs> Same okay. with you, Richard. Give it a whirl. Okay, so here's another activity and I call it homework because though we don't give our adult student homework per se, but this is something that they can do and then come back and share with the class. And it's, you know, with your employer, just going and asking this question. Does your company offer a retirement plan? Does the company contribute to your or match your employee contributions to the plan? When I do this with the students, you'll be surprised at how many students have worked for companies that, for, that have 401k and they have no idea. And, and they see the work, but they don't know what it is. So it's important that you talk to your students about this topic. Okay, this one is uh, a listening activity that you can do with immersive reading. 
So this one too, I want to know if you know what immersive reading reader is. And I'm going to tell you, it's part of Microsoft Word. So let's see if there's anybody here who knows what immersive reader is. Christina, you help me with this, please. Definitely. Well, I know that we have it in our Canvas platform and it's very useful. It's where it reads it to you. Correct. So here's an, this is another website that has been out there for the years and the years. I think Phil Anderson, who's here today, shared this website with me many years ago. And it's elcivics.com. And they have an activity about a checking account. How you can do, use this with Immerse Reader is you can copy the text or whatever text you want. I'm going to use this. As an example, okay, you copy it and then you go in through Microsoft Word. You paste it there. Okay. And then you go into view. And it's, here's Immersive Reader. Uh oh, Christina, we don't see it. You don't see it? We okay. see, we saw you highlight uh, the reading passage. Okay, so let me go back to where you are. I'm going to stop share and share again. Mm -hmm. So I choose the screen. I guess it's an application. It wasn't yeah. here, but here it is. Okay, you see it now? Yes. Yeah, I copy and pasted it into Word. When you click on, let me go back home, okay? When you are in Word, you will click view where it says view, and then you click immersive reader, and it See, I click it again. This is how it is when you paste it. And then once you click Immersive Reader, it turns into a larger one. And what it does is you can have this read it to your students. Okay, so this will, uh, hold on. If you click read aloud. Rosa is engaged to her boyfriend, Kyle. They plan to get to married in May. And they are each saving three hundred and fifty dollars a month for the wedding and the. Not sure if you can uh, hear it because I think I forgot to. Yeah. to click we heard it. We heard it. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. And you know it went really fast, but if you click here on the settings, you can change the speed. I just add in the chat box, Christina, for everybody. I want to thank you for not even teaching us just about financial literacy, but you're also teaching us some digital literacy skills. <laughs> Thank you. If you want to have fun for a minute with your students, when you have the reading speed, put it really low. Okay, it will read really low and it'll give them a little chuckle. Okay, because it does sound really funny. So I'm going to go back now to my other presentation. Sorry, got to go from one place to the other here. <laughs> here we're patient. And whenever I go back, I can never find the right place. But here we go. It is here. Okay. So this is what I was before showing you uh, how you copy and paste. Then you can use this true or false questions uh, for conversation because this is a listening activity, not as much as conversation, but you can still use these questions. Okay. And the next one is what do you say? Teach your students about idioms. I have been a victim of not knowing idioms for a long time. Okay. But now on, I've been. I'm old enough, let's put it away, to admit I did not understand what somebody said to me and I will ask for clarifi clarification. But there are many sites and I put a few here. The first one is where this picture came from that have idioms that refers to financial literacy. So here goes nickel and dime and what it means. This is fun uh, to cut them into cards and then just put nickel and dime on one side and then description is is on the other side and then have the student uh, front to front and just say, you know, they one student only gonna see nickel and dime and said, what does that mean? And see if they can guess what it is because the other student has the answer. Okay, so that's the way you can do this for conversation. So there are three websites and I'm gonna show all three, but uh, they all have um, the um, idioms there. This one were financial, but there's also health idioms. <laughs> okay, so for Christine part, for health, health uh, literacy part, there are also some idioms that are good for the students to know. 
And as you can see, I'm sure you're thinking already of ideas in your head on how you can use these in your classroom to build listening and conversational skills within your classroom. And I know Kayla, could I pick on Kayla Abru real quickly? If you want to unmute yourself, I'm curious to hear how you use idioms in your class. Is Kayla around to unmute by any chance? Let's give her a minute. Sometimes Can you I hear me. Oh, there's Kayla. Yes, I'm just interested. How do you use idioms in your class for listening and conversation? I usually use it in my conversation class. Um, um, give them certain readings that include the idioms and then have them try and figure out what they mean in wow. terms of the context that's in the reading. My students yeah. love it. Sometimes I just give them a picture um, okay. so they can associate the picture to what, what it actually means. And we talk about what it says literally and then we talk about what it actually means ah oh, that's good thank sometimes you sometimes i make them draw a picture of the literal meaning before we go into the um non-literal mm. i love it they do love it and i do know that one of our teachers they have like a whole wall so they keep them posted so once again it's not a one and done type of lesson yes. it's like an ongoing lesson that's awesome. And, and I hope everybody's correct. reading the chat box because everybody is sharing some great ideas. Erica okay. just added in a That's fun fine. one too on how she teaches okay. idioms. See you later. Mm -hmm. Great job. All right, thank you for sharing. So we'll, um, if you will prefer, we can put the uh, links on the chat box or like I'd say, you'll get the presentation get and you can go ahead and... I know I like to get them get them in the chat box. Then I save them on my computer as I go. <laughs> oh, I guess I, I I could do that. I'm not too sure if oh I'm not too sure if I'm that uh, computer savvy, but I could try. I'm gonna try. Let I'll be me, following I'll, I'll, up with an email. I can send this uh, through with a follow up email that I sent to all the attendees. Oh yeah. Okay, that sounds great, Nicole. But now I, now I want to um, stretch my digital literacy skills and watch this. I want to see if I could do it. <laughs> Ready? Oh, let's see. Hold on. Give me one second. If I can't do it in one second, you guys win. Pace. Oh, look. <laughs> I did it. it. Good job. <laughs> okay. See, I like learning new things as well. I All like right. to copy and paste as I go, but I can't because I cannot see the chat box. I know, that's presenting. that's a tricky one. Yeah. All right, Christina, I think if we go to that next slide, um, I know we have about 53 participants on. Um, if anybody has any questions for Christina and I or anybody in the group, now's the time to either ask the question in the chat box or just unmute yourself. Give a couple of seconds here. Okay, so either everybody's either totally um, multitasking or they're very shy, or maybe we, uh, there are no questions for today. I see, uh, thank you for all your helpful information. Um, instead of great job, it's great job for everybody. We appreciate your time um, that you took to join our presentation today. Um, recommendations, oh wait, hold on. Now things are coming in the chat box, uh-oh. Someone asked about the grant and reporting requirements. Yeah. Uh, Heather, you want to answer or do you want us to answer? Let's go back to that one, Anne. I think. Yeah, I give me just a moment. I think she's asking um, about the results from the grant. And so I can bring those oh. up um, as you answer other questions. Okay, perfect. And Robert, you had a question. Robert asked, can we change the voice used on immersive reader? Yes, that is correct. There are different voices that you can use in Immersive Reader. Okay. There's a female voice, uh, and I think two male voices, and they are both different. Yes, thank you. That was a good question. I should have said that. I was just a little, being a little mindful of the time. <laughs> yeah, you told us about the speed, but it also changes the voice. Yes, it changes um, the voice. There are female and male voices there. 
Perfect. Norman, yes, I believe Nicole and Heather will definitely repeat the Florida Literacy Conference information. And I know you could also find it on the Florida Literacy Coalition website. And I wanted to share for the financial literacy that we got this year, we have um, a few students that were presenting on their own businesses. And now we're talking about other students, you know, trying to have their own businesses. So uh, we, with the funds, we're going to buy those students who are opening their new businesses some business cards, just mm -hmm. so that you get an idea of something you can do. Okay, Charlene had a question. This is probably a good one. Uh, she asked for any recommendations for resources for very low beginners. The resources that we shared today could be for beginner, intermediate, and advanced, but I think I understand what you're saying about the very low uh, beginners. And that's just, for example, for my piece that I went on, let's just stick with role plays, or let's just start with at the very beginning, the informal conversations. Uh, with an informal conversation with a very low beginners, you're going to want to scaffold and maybe have some sentence frames up on the board for them, um, for them just to kind of fill in the blank. So definitely use sentence frames. And then for the role plays, keep them short. Also, the Randa Lab for the listening activities have different levels. The one I showed was intermediate, but they start on EC. So you can find some uh, listening activities for them that are really low level. Also the Kahoot, uh, there are many different levels of Kahoot too that you can use as well for the very low beginning levels. And I do have to second Kayla Brew again, she shared a resource too. I love when we get teachers all together. Um, Breaking News English, I love that site as well. I highly recommend that one too. See, there's so many good ones out there. Um, let's see what else. They shared the literacy uh, conference information in the chat box. And I believe that is all for us. Once again, thank you for joining us, Christina. I have always love working with you. Thank you, same to you. And thank I you, think a team. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks both of you. And if anyone was interested um, in the results, I could talk about that just for a moment since it looks like we have a second left. Sure. Um, By the way, Christina, I thought that was excellent. Thank you. It was. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome Great. anytime. Uh, Chris, Christine, you know what we didn't put our email addresses. So I'm gonna put my email address on the chat box if you wanna reach out to me. Uh, if you, uh, there's anything I can help you with, I'll gladly do it. I'll do the same. So for anyone who is interested, um, we do have great results from um, our Florida Financial Literacy Initiative Program. Um, these are the results from the 2019-20 year, but our results are pretty consistent from year to year in terms of looking at um, when we have uh, teachers, um, and this is both for health literacy and financial literacy, but I just pulled up the financial literacy right now. Um, but these are pre and post assessments um, and behavioral surveys that our grantees, just like Christine and Christina, um, they give these to their students. So you can see here in the right, um, in 2019-20 um, grantee year, we saw 68% of students increasing their knowledge from the pre to the post test. Um, and, and the financial literacy um, knowledge tests are actually pretty difficult. Uh, so uh, I think it really shows the power um, of teaching financial literacy, as well as the commitment and creativity of our grantee programs um, and coming up with, you know, as uh, Christina showed us, some really innovative ways of teaching uh, these difficult skills. Uh, because I like what you said, Christina, about these being lifetime skills, uh, and they definitely are, um, as well as the health literacy skills too. So we have results from both of our grantee programs up on our website. Uh, if you take a look at our website, you can see we have a financial literacy tab as well as a health literacy tab. And you can find a lot of these resources um, as well as results on those tabs. So thank you both so much for sharing your resources um, and suggestions with us today. All right, so thank you all for joining us today. Um, I will go ahead and repeat um, 
we, we were asked to kind of repeat with the conference information. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and throw that up on screen really quickly um, again and everything walking away. Okay, so you will get 20% um, off the conference registration for the next 48 hours. And this is a virtual conference, so it's all online. Um, so the promo code for it is webinar413. So it's webinar413. If you're having trouble with it in the next two days, please email me. And I'll, we have a little bit of, we have a little video um, instruction. If you can't quite figure out how to use the promo code, just let me know and I'll send that to you. Um, so I believe that would be all for today. So I'll go ahead and um, um, pass it back over to Heather. Um, so for those of you who are in the financial, um, who are financial literacy grantees, please stay on the line. Everyone else, have a wonderful day and thank you for joining us. Bye. All right, Heather, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna make you the host of the meeting, okay? Great, thank you. All right, Heather, you should be good to go. So we're going to take a short break. Um, those of you who are current financial literacy grantees, again, we'll start the meeting um, in just about two or three minutes. So jump up, get some water, use the restroom. Um, if you are not a current grantee, um, you're welcome to listen in, but we're gonna be talking um, kind of about some of our uh, business in terms of our grant program. So everybody just can take a minute to stretch. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the second piece. Again, I'm not sure if there's anybody still on the call who um, was with the uh, webinar, but we're gonna get started with our financial literacy grant uh, meeting. Um, so Greg, if you wanna start? Sure, welcome everyone. Hope you all enjoyed that session. I certainly did. A great job, Christina and Christine. And uh, I think it's a great segue into our conversation today um, where we'll be getting some updates and I know uh, Heather has some additional information that she wants to share as well. So um, I guess we should just go ahead and dive in. This is uh, scheduled, it's gonna be a bit shorter than our regular meeting because we had the, uh, the webinar uh, tied to it. So our, we're looking at um, wrapping up right around 2.45. So um, let me 
Candy back over to you, Heather, and we can get started with the updates. Okay, so we're gonna pour, put poor Christine on the spot, or do you wanna go last? Uh, it's okay. <laughs> Give her it's a okay. breather. <laughs> Take a deep breath. <gasps> Well, with us, you know, I told you we had a, a little of a slow start because we having to do a lot of things. And I, uh, but we started uh, with the uh, financial literacy and we had the students do presentations. We kind of put a call out to the students who had businesses and to do like a form of advertisement of their businesses for the other students. We also have students who were teaching other students how to open a business, the steps that you need to take to open a business from scratch. We also did the America Saves Week. I think Heather, you send us that link for America Saves. So we were part of it and we have our four classes participate and it was great because every day they had something to do. They had videos, it was really nice. Uh, we are set to open face-to-face -face classes here on April 26th. So we are making plan to making a smaller kind of financial literacy day because uh, they really enjoy that, that fair when we did it with Wells Fargo and then bring guest speakers. So that's kind of what's coming next. And like I said earlier, we want to see the students who are opening business now, if we can give them like the first set of 25 business cards. And, but everybody's gonna work in designing their own business cards. Even if they don't have a business, we want our students to be able to kind of to sell themselves to employers uh, better. We also have uh, this Friday, actually, a workshop on opening an account on, um, I can't think of the website, something central, job central. <laughs> Because um, that's what businesses post their jobs and how to, you know, how you open your account there. Because then the following week, there's going to be a virtual job fair. We had planned for a face to face job fair, but it's not going to happen. So it's going to be a, a virtual event. Our students will be able to apply for jobs and stuff. Um, so right now we feel really rich because we have money. <laughs> And everything because it's not face to face, you know. Um, be, in the past, we used to buy the student nice paper for the resume and, you know, to put them in an envelope. That's not there anymore. But we, it's coming along and we're very excited and waiting to see somebody else have also good ideas so we can use some of those. Thank you. I had a, I had a quick question because um, we've been kind of taking a look at whether we we might want to do something around this entrepreneurship, promoting entrepreneurship, small business development. Mm -hmm. I love the idea of having students work with other students who have already had some success in starting small businesses. Mm -hmm. um, how are you, are they sort of presenting or is it more of a mentorship kind of thing? How, how is that whole piece working? What we are doing is just the students present but if somebody in the, who's listening wants to open a business, they can contact that student. And we try to also guide them you know, with uh, information. We're gonna have another presentation that I'm, again, we're repeating it so, because we're gonna have like a coach too from the school, a person who knows more information. Uh, so once I have that, I'll be happy to share, but that's how it's gonna go. It was student, presenting to students. They had PowerPoint presentations. And, and did you find that a, a pretty good number of the students are interested in perhaps starting their own small business or was it a kind of a small percentage of the students? It, it was a small percentage of okay. the students. Um, and it's, you know, some students like that girl, she has a business, one had a business like cleaning homes, but they don't understand that that's a business. You know, they see it like as a job. Well, you don't have a boss, you're your own boss. So it's your right. business. Right. So we started coaching her first on how she did it, how she purchased her materials, you know, how she reports her income, because that's something too that we're trying to get them. You know, even if you work in and people paying cash, you should pay your tax part and, you know, how to do it, because some of them don't know. Right. Uh, and then we had some others that had a little bit more established businesses already. 
Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, next on our list, coordinated care for children. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, hey, Kayla. Well, again, we also had a, a pretty slow start at the beginning um, because of the pandemic and the fact that we were working with students both at home and we were just starting to get students to come back into the classroom. Um, right now, we are having hybrid um, financial literacy where students are both at home and in the, in the center. Um, what we've done in financial literacy, well, we've been talking about the different topics we've been doing presentations um, in the classroom, not as much from the students, but um, we are working with um, budgeting. And so they are working on their own budgeting for the entire month. They're working on writing all their um, expenses so that we can enter into um, creating a budgeting plan we reached out to someone from uh, Bank of America. They came, they, well, didn't come, but they um, did a virtual workshop for um, the America Saves um, Week. We did a, a small um, financial literacy workshop where um, he taught my students about um, credit, the importance of, of uh, building credit, how to build their credit, but most importantly, how to create a financial plan in order to have a more successful financial future. At this moment, we're, on, we're working pretty much on um, trying to partner up with UF and integrating nutrition into our um, financial literacy grant. That way students not only, because they have a lot of parents so that way they're not only you know, creating their financial future, but they're also learning how to budget within their meals and how to shop smart. So we're looking to you know, use some of the money in that area where they would have to create um, a um, shopping list and then have them compare prices that's coming up after their when they're finished doing their monthly budget. That's a really, I think, great activity that we can all apply to life, right? And trying to figure out how to coupon and budget and uh, so. Yeah, I, that's I'm, one of the things that they wanted to do is how to use coupons and um, mm -hmm. how, to, how to learn to save within the different stores, where to get what and how to shop smart. Yeah. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we've got El Sol. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. I um, first want to say thank you for the work you did in simplifying the pre and post for the financial literacy. Um, I think that's really helped. It's less intimidating for our students. So thank you really for doing that. Um, so our financial uh, component this year, we ended up doing a little bit different. We've always incorporated it you know, 30 minutes into every class. But this year, Linda wanted to do something differently. So she added, um, our students come three days a week for ESL. But this time when we register, we register them for four days. And that fourth day was exclusively financial literacy. So it was, it was to totally focused on finance topics. Our computer teachers is the one that um, is taking over that, or it has taken over that and um, was also incorporating some computer skills. So it's been a, a totally different approach. We have, I would say 14 to 20 students who attend you know, each, each day. They, they'll still touch financial topics as part of the ESL curriculum, but this is a more concentrated um, focus that sometimes they'll go in between English and Spanish. The students still want the English, but when they're trying to really get important information through, you know, they'll bring in the Spanish also. Um, some of the topics, I was just bringing that up to um, share with you are, for example, your money values and how your values and your thoughts and perceptions about money influence your spending, uh, making a, a simple budget. And like here, he'll get, go into PowerPoint, for example, and use, use the um, PowerPoint Excel to, to kind of 
teach some of some of those skills also. Um, saving and setting goals. Um, an important one for our population also has been making money and, and the, the gig economy. Um, you know, our workers, you know, might work two or three times a week, you know, and it's, it's, they don't have full time employment, they don't have stable employment, they don't get a stable paycheck. One day they might get paid, you know, $100, another day they might only make 60 and another one they may make 200. So how do you budget when you don't really know exactly how much money is coming into you? So that's been a, an interesting topic and something that we're finding through our case management team, when our workers come in to sign up and to register and go through the case management process, they're really finding a tremendous need for this finance education. And so our next step really is to try to find a way to provide this education to those workers who are not participating in, in our nighttime English classes. And to give you an example, there was um, a young worker in his, I would say mid thirties maybe, who had a medical problem, had saved up the money for his surgery last year. He, he, had, to, he had to come up with half the money. This other medical organization was providing the other half. The holidays came around. His family in Guatemala called him and said they needed money for Christmas and he sent the money that he had saved for his surgery because that became more important. So then he came to us wanting help for the surgery and you know, you know we can't, you know, this, that, that we don't have that, we can't do that. So what happened and he goes into this, this whole thing. So then he decided that he wanted to, just to go back to Guatemala, he can get the surgery done there and you know, at no cost and, So. <laughs> I can't hear you, Greg. You're muted. I think we, yeah, and I, no, I think we lost her. I guess. Okay. okay. Well, we'll definitely come back. I oh, want to hear how that story ended. <laughs> yeah. Um. So we'll we'll wait a moment for her to jump back on, uh, and I think move to you, Marcus, or whoever was going to represent Literacy Alliance in Northeast Florida. Sure. Yeah, I can do it. Thank you, everybody. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of curious to to know how that. Um, turned out too. And I see that she says, uh, sorry, she can hear us. Okay. But we can't hear her. But um, yeah, I'm happy to give a real quick update. Uh, I want to echo um, what Suzanne said about the changes in the pre post test. So thank you for for all your attention to that. It's, it's uh, really made a big difference for us. And uh, I think maybe the last time we met, I talked a little bit about our cell phone uh, project that our students did. So they obviously finished that. And then now, uh, interestingly enough, as we are starting to emerge from COVID, um, uh, our, our students were talking about wanting to travel and uh, particularly now that they're gonna be able to go start seeing family members and what have you. So they've actually turned that into a project on budgeting for vacations. So that's what they're working on now. Um, and it's fun to watch them uh, start to, to apply some of the lessons that they've learned. So that's it for us, just a quick update. I hope that uh, uh, we're looking forward to seeing what they do with it. Um, and just to kind of circle back around, I think that we mentioned this before, um, but ELSOL and um, Literacy Alliance of Northeast Florida are piloting a beginner's assessment um, this year. So that's what they are referring to is that their students are trying it out. We're trying to test the wording, um, make sure that it measures what we want. Uh, so hopefully next year we'll be able to launch that with everybody. Uh, whereas like our with our health literacy program, you'll have the ability to either choose for a particular class a beginner assessment or more of an intermediate assessment. So thanks, Marcus. Yeah, um, and you're up next, learn to read uh, St. John's County. Or Joseph, whoever is going to. Uh, well, I mean, Andy's here. I'm glad to see that. But Anne, <laughs> if you want, I can tell them a few things. Okay. Um, yeah, we're a little bit more traditional as far as learn to read because we've partnered with St. Gerard Campus, which is the high school I think I mentioned last time. Um, for young women, young pregnant women, young mothers. Um, but also as part of Learn to Read, we have uh, students that, um, and parents of students from the Webster School, which is a local school here in St. Augustine, who also participate. Um, I have been able to get a Dr. Richard Burroughs, who came to us through United Way, 
he has a PhD um, and he teaches uh, taxes and that financial literacy type of uh, issues. So he has begun with our students here and that curriculum that he's sharing with me, I'm going to uh, share that with the other tutors and learn to read so that we can give that to people. It's essentially a program that was set up by guests under the FDIC and made available to either financial institutions or individuals. It's fantastic. I mean, it's based on a series of modules. Uh, I think there's 15 or 16 in total. So it's pretty intensive, but he's, he's being able to devote about an hour and a half of uh, two times a week so we can get a ton before the end of the school year. Um, and it starts off essentially with values and money, goals and money, external influences for people. And it's very nice because within the uh, teaching tools that it has, it goes through various vignettes of, um, you know, Valentina and Isaiah decide how to spend their tax refund. So it's very good in terms of practical information that the students can use, something they can relate to. Um, ultimately, the ultimate goal being that as we develop budgeting and develop financial literacy on different levels, we can also develop a career guide, which I, Anne has spoken to in the past. That's ultimately what we wanna do with our students um, so that they can determine what, if any financial um, careers they might be able to pursue. Hopefully work with Wells Fargo on that. And um, I, I'm pretty excited that we're finally able to meet with people in person and really uh, delve into the financial literacy. Also, um, I know that Anne wanted to mention and probably will do so, but wanted to mention that, thank you Heather for um, sending us the links for the uh, America Saves, as well as the free tax assistance programs that are available in the communities because we've made that available to the students that hopefully can benefit from that. Ant? Great, yeah, you covered it pretty well. We also, uh, what kind of fell in our lap, we were lucky, is a ESOL student, a tutor, that wants to take on as many classes as he wants with a financial literacy background. So how lucky did we get there? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so thank you. And I know it has nothing to do with the presentation, but uh, Christina, again, I thought your thing was excellent and not to be uh, self-aggrandizing, but there's many things that you were talking about that I've used in the past and that Learn to Read has used. So I'm very glad to hear it's successful for you as well. Thank you, thank you so much. Appreciate your kind comments. And speaking of taxes, I guess I need to look it up to, to verify. Greg, check me if I'm wrong, but um, even some of my friends didn't realize that the tax date has been changed for 2021. Um, so if you haven't mentioned that to your students, you might want to do that. And I believe it's May 15th. Um, yeah. Right. So just so you know that. And then also we have another open enrollment for um, health insurance right now too until May 15th. So if you have students who um, maybe had a job change or a, a, some situation requiring them to get additional health insurance, um, we do have that open enrollment going on right now too. Uh, so next we've got Literacy Pros of Jacksonville. Yes, hi everybody, this is Susan Prados. Uh, this winter we've delivered our program to young adults uh, with disabilities who are, who are with the ARC, with ARC on a transition to college program. And they're delightful students. Uh, Although it's tricky, uh, they have a, a little bit shorter attention span than many adults. And we've had, we found, again, they are young adults uh, in their 20s. So we found that we have to keep the um, presentation engaging. Um, and consequently, we have uh, a nice, I, we call it a budgeting game. It's very much like uh, the hands-on banking, ex, the way they call it the HOB experience, uh, where they have, they're introduced to, uh, let's see, need and want decisions and having long-term goals. And they're given a real life monthly budget and they have to go through all their needs. And then they see uh, the consequences of the wants, and, and they see the consequences of also long-term savings. 
Um, so it's it's a the whole course, you know, it covers all, all of our subjects, including um, uh, identity theft and financial services. And they've been a nice group. I think we've we've gone through all of them, and we are about to turn our efforts to some summer camps um, that we have relationships with. Uh, let's see. We did develop a credit score game, and that is probably um, better better would serve an adult population than a youth population. And I um, am interested to know if anyone has found good resources on. Uh, payment apps. I mean, primarily what we have found and what we've presented to the students is the how to stay safe with payment apps and how it is basically like cash and you will never be reimbursed. Um, and to have the usual safe, safety features such as uh, locked, locked screens, lo uh, passwords on your apps and things like that. Uh, but if anybody has come across any good um, training material and payment apps, we, we would be interested in seeing it. Um, and that that's where we are at this point in the year. I do, I would say um, the pre and post test as they're written now are very intimidating, um, or quite intimidating, I should say. Anyway, so I look forward to seeing what, uh, Heather, did you allude to a pilot of a beginner assessment? Yes. Um, I did. So that was uh, an issue that um, definitely El Sol has talked to me about for a while, as well as Marcus. So that's why we tried to take some steps this year to write some new questions and implement it. And, you know, we really just needed to do it with a small group first to see if it's going to be an effective tool for us. Uh, but it sounds like it is. And I'll, when I look at the data, um, then we probably will be able to have that available next year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alrighty. Well, yes. So that's our uh, kind of summary so far this year. Okay. Great. Thanks. Um, sorry, my list got. Uh, Kathy, School District of DeSoto County. Thank you, Heather. Hello, everyone. Um, so while our numbers have been a little bit smaller this year, we are fortunate that for the most part, all of our students have opted to do face to face. Um, we are continuing. We have a. a a counselor, career counselor on campus that's meeting with whole group students with social distancing um, on a monthly basis to talk about budgeting, credit, paying with cash, um, you know, a mortgage, the beginning stages of how to get a mortgage. Um, that's a, a larger group. Then when our classes are breaking up, they're using their Chromebooks, several of them to um, use hands-on banking, which is still, has, has, has always been a really great tool for us. Um, Prior to Christmas, I probably mentioned this, I think at our January call, our um, student-based activity has been planning for something. So prior to Christmas, it was planning for Christmas presents and how are we gonna save our money? Um, now, just like Marcus, we shifted gears to if we are able to take trips this summer, how are we gonna save and what would those trips look like? What With the money that we have, what could we possibly do? Um, and like Christina, we also participated and I think Anne might've mentioned it also, um, in the America Saves Week, which has always been a great, um, a great project for us to be a part of. So having a good year, different year as everyone, but um, things are going going along very well. Thank you. Um, and Seminole State College. Yes, hi, and Christina. Awesome presentation. Will you please send me those links? Because I didn't quite fast enough to get them all down on the chat. <laughs> We'll definitely send it out to everybody like the Oh, great. Yeah, thank you. you. That was wonderful. She picked up some stuff. I was like, oh, I haven't seen that. <laughs> so, pass that on to my instructor. Um, we, we're still uh, online um, because we have not been able to come back to campus yet. So um, our students are amazing doing their projects, though. They Some of the audiovisual stuff that they do are, is just really awesome. Um, but the biggest thing that they do is to take their project and go into a lower level class and present it. So not only are they helping educate those students, but when they get into higher levels, then they're able to come into our classes too. So that's really awesome. We had a day class and an evening class this term. Uh, we retained 75% of our students, which is pretty good because a lot of our students are um, 
work at Amazon or places, some kind of uh, transportation places, and they their schedules keep changing. So it's it's been really hard with our retention. Um, we also were able to have um, Wells Fargo come in and talk about budgeting. So that was a that was great. We had um, Addition Financial, who partners with our college, also come in and talk about banking. And we had um, our CPA, Michelle Kagan, uh, come back and talk. She's an author, and we give one of her books to all of our students um, at the end of the term if they pass. And um, she came in and talked about taxes, seeing as it's around tax season. They always they keep her for the full hour, and she donates that to us, and it's just been wonderful. She, she's, um, I think this is the second semester we've had her now so that's it she's really awesome and some of our students are actually keeping in touch with her which is a really neat thing letting her know hey I got a job in the accounting field and things like that so um, it's been a really good partnership with her um, we are going to have two classes for the summer we started a tried this last year we have our level ones what we call our level one students and we do a, um, a level two so we go into a little more depth into um, investments and mutual funds and um, retirement and things like that, because there's just so much stuff in that hands-on banking, you can't get all of it in, um, in, in just for one class. So we go into a level two and we have a lot of our students that are really interested in going on to level two also in the summer. So we'll have a level one and a level two in the summer. So I know we're bumping up on that 245 time. I was just trying to estimate. Um, so if you could hang in with us for a few more minutes, we'd appreciate it. But we totally realize if you need to leave, um, we respect that too. I Before we kind of move on to the next part, I just want to say thank you. I know we kind of did things differently this time, but it seemed like a great opportunity to incorporate the webinar with our meeting. So I appreciate everybody um, kind of going with that new format. Next time, we'll probably go back to our other format. Um, Suzanne, if you're there, I think we were all interested to hear the ending of the story of the student that you were working with. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Sorry about that. Do not know what happened. So basically what he came back now wanting to go back to Guatemala, had saved some money to buy the plane ticket. We told him to come in. We were going to help him with the logistics of buying the plane ticket. He had spent it because his family wanted him to take back certain stuff with him. So no consideration of budgeting, no consideration of prioritizing his spending. And um, he had to go, I, I'm not sure how he eventually found the money to get back to Guatemala, but it just really brought up uh, the fact, we saw it also with COVID, because everything gets sent back to their home country, they keep nothing for themselves, no savings for themselves. So it's something really big that we've been trying to work on and that we wanna bring into other areas of the agency. I'm not sure how that will work. But um, real quickly, um, we also had a tax presentation that went very uh, interesting, well, very well, well received. We were also doing uh, some, trying to do some entrepreneurship activities. Uh, Christina mentioned that earlier uh, with our, through our worker development program. I, I'll let you know if, if it's been harder than we thought it would be. I'll, I'll let you know at our next meeting what happens with that. Um, and then our project that she's working on is, is with um, literal piggy banks, actually looking for some shape like a piggy bank to, to start with this concept of saving and um, you know what to do with the money and you know getting your children involved. So that's gonna be our, our hands-on project for for now i'd like to <clears throat> i'd like to add one thing that kind of dovetails on what you were just saying suzanne around savings <clears throat> uh and taxes for that, in that for that matter i mean we are and, and we could i know we don't have time to delve into this too deeply today but we're really kind of in an unprecedented time you know the the programs that have been rolled out <clears throat> really are the the largest poverty relief program since the great society and I, I hope that we can position our students who are not going through an economic emergency, having lost their job or what have you, to really think in terms of some of the dollars that they're getting through the stimulus. I mean, a family of four, you know, it's over $9,000 $9, so far. And this tax credit, refundable tax credit, and I don't know how many of your students really understand what that means, but uh, it will be 
allocated on a monthly basis and you know it's not a deduction from your taxes you'll you'll be getting a check and so for all for all your children who are uh, under six years of age that'll be thirty six hundred dollars for the year and for uh, those who are six to seventeen that'll be three thousand dollars a year so it really is a time you know probably unlike any in my lifetime where folks can really you know maybe have a develop a emergency reserve fund and really look to uh, saving money uh, in retirement or for education and for other purposes. It, it just uh, and and that's not the end of it. As we all know, there's you know enhanced SNAP benefits, enhanced unemployment. Uh, those of our those students who have a small business may be eligible for a PPP loan that can be converted into a grant. So. Um, so I, I do think this is a time where, you know, helping people to understand uh, and giving them some tools in terms of saving for the future, um, you know, really can help help families get ahead for once and perhaps, you know, rather than living paycheck to paycheck. Right. And the research really does support that. And the savings of $1,200 um, can really keep a family from having food insecurity issues, from perhaps losing a home. Um, from having to go to alternative banking uh, products. So right. Absolutely. Um, it's definitely a great opportunity, I think, for people who are still fully employed um, to be able to maximize that, that savings. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. Um, the next thing that we have um, on the agenda is just real quick. I wanted to make sure everybody saw the email I sent about your mid-year reports. Um, they are due on April 30th. And that report is also posted on our website. Again, I hope you've all been to the, the grant um, tab on the financial literacy page, but it is posted there as well. Uh, Greg, did you want to talk about the conference at all? Sure, I'd be happy to do that. And I'm actually posting right now something on the emergency broadband benefit. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. That has not hit, hit yet or it's not, you, folks are not able to apply for that, but that will be a uh, $50 uh, subsidy for internet. And they're also providing up to $100 uh, uh, contribution toward the purchase of a computer. So you can, you know, you, if you purchase a computer, $100 is going to be applied to that purchase. So keep an eye out for that. With regard to our conference, we do hope that all of you will be able to join us. Um, and you all are eligible for the, the discounted rate. Uh, it's, it's actually coming up two weeks from now, uh, the 28th through the 30th of, of this month. And uh, of course, it's going to be virtual. Uh, you can go onto our website and see the details in terms of all the different sessions that are going to be offered. I think it's a pretty good, good cross section of um, different sessions. Uh, we, we're not able to have quite as many as we have in our traditional conference, but we have, I think, 30 or 31 sessions that we'll be offering over the, the two and a half days. So I do hope that you all be able to join us for that. And it's such a great opportunity for your teachers and tutors to be able to attend to, um, being that it's virtual. You know, next year, we have no idea what it's going to look like. Hopefully, it won't be 100% virtual. So um, take that, you know, money that you budgeted in your grant uh, and try to get as many people uh, to attend as possible. And since if you do have gonna, go ahead. Sorry, since we're going to need a mental, mental break next year, can we go back to Captiva? <laughs> We'll look into it. I don't know <laughs> whether we can make that affordable or not, but uh, you know, it was great. They've given us good deals in the past, so it's you know not off the table. Um, so yeah. Oh, and we also have some uh, conference scholarships uh, and we're really particularly targeting those to volunteers. So if you have volunteers, uh, um, we, we'd love to have their participation and all that information's on our website. Uh, so anything anyone would like to discuss that we haven't brought up? Um, well, it has been brought up. So I just, uh, Heather, you really would like us to use those pre and post assessments as best as we can right now, even though there yeah, is- Yeah, so I'm glad you said that. Okay. Um, so last year was tough, um, definitely. And we had a lot of pre and not a lot of post. Um, and, you know, we really need to stick at that 40% participation in the pre and post, if at all possible. Okay. Um, I am fine with if you want to have some incentives using your grant okay. budget okay. to get students to participate. Um, 
you know, I just think it's, it's serious because Wells Fargo is looking and they're really looking at, you know, how is their money being spent and how can we document and kind of prove, um, we all know that we are conducting these programs on a shoestring budget, right? Um, but we really want to be able to show that to them and they're changing how they're assessing all of their, um, their grantees. So we're having to do more reporting than we did in the past. Um, so anything that you can do, or if, if you need some individual help, I'd be willing to help you strategize. I know it's a tough time to get those pre-tests back as well as the behavioral surveys, but it's such rich information about all the great work that you're doing. Okay. Thank yeah, so you. online, okay. print, you know, the print version, whatever you, whatever you can, can use. Um, but again, I have no problem with incentives if there's, you know, people that are you know, having trouble getting back. We'll do. I have a question. Mm -hmm. How far in do you think we should give them the post? So everybody's different. So I don't know exactly how you guys are structured. Some people do kind of do their class on a quarter or semester basis. Um, I don't recommend all because I think that you lose that way. Um, so I think it has to be a balance between you teaching enough content and being able to retain students. Do you have kind of a class time frame that you usually enroll students or how, do, how does it work? Well, my classes are a little bit different. They're year round and right. we just started in January. So I was kind of figuring maybe um, to give them the, pre, the post like end of May before summer, maybe if you see, yeah. you know, that you lose some students over the summer, that's, then that might be a good. That's usually when I start to lose students. So I was thinking end of May, give them the post. And yeah. one more question, um, the survey, when is a good time for them to fill that out too? Other people can kind of chime in, but in my experience, it's often given at the same time as the post or in that same okay. time frame. So maybe that not the same day, but the same week. Um, you know, the same basic time. So it'll be like the closure of, of uh, time of that time of learning. Right, right. Okay. But, um, you know, we really have to rely on you to kind of figure out that best balance and that best time to give it. Because um, you hate to lose students as well and then not be able to show that. Exactly. That post okay, thank you. So Anne, did I answer your question at all or did I over answer your question? <laughs> Except, no, you're great. Thanks. That was, okay. that was cool. Thank you. Any other, any other students? If not, then we should go ahead and schedule our next meeting. I'm sorry that we went over a little bit. I uh, appreciate everybody hanging in there. Uh, so we're gonna be looking at July. This year is just moving along. Do you have a date, that, um, a suggested date? We could say Wednesday, July 16th. We could start there. I'm sure some of you have some wonderful vacations planned. July 16th is a Friday on my calendar. Oh, is it? I think you were looking at June, Heather. My bad. Yes, let's go 14th, thank you. 14th, okay. 14th, fine. At what time? Same time, one o'clock work. You want to do that one o'clock? Does that work for everybody? The 14th at one o'clock? Is that a problem sorry, for anybody? Can we, Go ahead. can we try and keep it a Tuesday? Okay. Tuesday, Tuesday would work better for me. Okay. Also. Tuesday the 13th at one o'clock. Perfect. Is that, Thank is you. That, is, is that a problem for anybody? Thursday at, excuse me, Tuesday the 13th at 1 p.m.? Okay. Looks like we got a time then. All right. Great. Fantastic. Okay. Well, thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks, everyone. You Thank you, Sarah, for a great Take presentation. Care. Thank you. Bye now. Have a good one. Welcome. Thank you for the opportunity. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.